up, fam? This is Ronnie Smith, RonnieSmith.com, coming to you with uh, a topic that's kind of been on my mind a little heavy today. And I, I know I tend to make long videos, and I'm going to try to make this one short and sweet. I'm in the car. I'm about to get out. If y'all, if any of you have children, you know a lot of times if you want to try to video something or just do any kind of production and the kids are home, it's almost impossible because it's like showtime at the Apollo as soon as you put the video on. So um, there's that. And then the lighting is really uh, a lot better out here. So you may wonder why I'm always in my car. Uh, if it works for Derek Jackson, it'll work for me. But anyway, so I'm just getting home from church. And I got to thinking about uh, a trend I'm starting to notice in uh, just maybe like millennials, Gen Z, anybody like um, in what we lovingly call the Zennials, which is that generation I'm in between X and, um, and the millennials, uh, where like we want church. We want the Christian experience. We want fellowship. But for some reason, a lot of people in the generation I'm talking about, 20s and 30s and younger, are shying away from traditional church. Traditional meaning that, you know, we come to a building, the general assembly, there's a choir, there's praise and worship, there's maybe even a worship team. There's the offering portion of the service where someone will come up and speak about uh, the benefits of giving. There's communion and communion type songs. There's greeters and ushers and deacons and, uh, you know, this whole team of people who help to coordinate and organize the service and help it move from point to point. And while there are a lot of things we can say about traditional church, I think this generation coming up has really just decided to reject all of it. Meaning we don't want a polished service. We want to just come together and fellowship as believers. They're looking at home church. I can't tell you how many people I talk to who would prefer to just go to someone's home and fellowship with people over some pastries and coffee. And we're sitting around the living room and we sing a few songs and someone gets up and gives a message and we call that a church service. And so as I'm presenting this concept of like, here's this alternative to traditional church. I do want to say, I have no issue with meeting from home to home because that's what they did in, in, the, in the Acts church, the original church that was established after Jesus went back to be with the Father. People met from house to house, having all things in common. When someone had a need amongst the assembly, People sold their goods to to meet the need of, of their brother or sister. And, you know, it really was a true sense of this Christian community. There was a true sense of, um, of getting to know one another on a personal level and walking out your faith together. And, and I think what people are doing, you tell me if you're one of these people, like, why do you prefer the home church experience or just meeting with a couple of friends on a Sunday and talking about Jesus? over coffee. Like, why do you prefer that? I hear a lot of people say that, you know, it's more authentic and it's more genuine to be with people in an intimate setting where you can talk and get to know one another. And that maybe we're not really serving the true purpose of the church to meet in these large groups. You know, we can get into talking about mega churches and all that. And Truthfully, the average church in America by statistics is actually less than a thousand people. Although um, most of the churches I've been in, I think if you look at their who, who considers that their home church, it would be about a thousand or more, if not close to two thousand. And, you know, I, I just think people are turned off by that. They're turned off by the large assembly. They feel lost in the shuffle. And I get it. I get it. Actually, I'm answering my own question. Like, why are people shying away from the church? Let's talk about it. People feel like they're lost in the shuffle. Like they're, they're, they're there, but they have no real connection to anybody. If you're brand new walking into a church, it's very hard to, to feel like you belong. Uh, you might get a greeting here or there. There might be that cue that the pastor gives to greet someone, shake a hand, 
But beyond that, you've had no real interaction with anybody. So that could make you feel isolated. And it's the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish in church, right? You may also find, excuse me for the music if that was distracting. I didn't even think about it. But yeah, so like we're, we're talking about like being lost in the group. We're also talking about how maybe the order of service turns people off. Is that it? I mean, is it because because there's like, okay, we're going to do this, then this, then this, then this. And we go down the line of what has to happen. Perhaps the spirit's not free to move in a particular service because we're sticking to a schedule. And that could get into a whole other topic about spirit-led churches versus legalistic churches. Spirit-led churches, some people get turned off by that because it, it could, all it takes is that one song, right? That one song that sets everybody off. And then the, the music ministry, they going in, you know, and then there's the foot stomping and the huckabucking and carrying on. And that could go on for 15 minutes. And you're sitting here going, wow, are we going to get a word today? While some people would say that's a good time, somebody else might be turned off because they really need a word from God and they hoping that the sermon's going to hit home. But, you know, in a, in a church where it's loosey-goosey and the Spirit's having complete reign, where there's a lot of things just kind of get <laughs> crossed out for that. I think it's funny. So, okay, we're just not going to do that today because we, we got kind of carried away with the music. But what if you had a church that was really intentional with newcomers and even beyond your first visit but every time you come it's like home where there's always a hug there's always a friendly face people when they ask you how you're doing they genuinely want to know the answer and they wait to hear your response that they look for you when you come in those doors what if there was room for the spirit to move but also giving way for um, important things like letting you know what kind of um, events are happening in your demographic um, and, and like, you know, opportunities to serve and things like that. Like they gave room for that. They gave room for the, the sermon, but still let the spirit move. If if the people are, are kind of just, if the people are motivated towards worship, the last thing you want to do is have a, a, a an itinerary where you say, you know what, we're going to cut it off because we need to do announcements. Like, Obviously, that's not why we're there. We're there to give honor and glory to God. We're there to praise him and thank him for all he's done and to express our gratitude to him. That's what the service is about. And you might be saying, well, I need more intimacy. I need real relationships with other Christians. Well, I think a church does really well when they have small groups. These are groups that meet outside of the Sunday experience where there are people who they see each other weekly and they are in, they're investing in each other's lives and they're going through perhaps a book of the Bible or a particular topic and they're going to the Bible for answers on that topic as a group. And if there's questions, you're free to ask those questions and you're free to be vulnerable and honest about where you are, whether you have doubts about your faith or whether you're struggling with a particular sin, like you can go in this group and speak and be heard and not judged like that small groups are, are really the heart of a, any any good, healthy church. And it really does promote growth, not only in numbers, but in, in, in like measuring the spiritual growth of your believers. I mean, of your of your congregation. So, you know, I'm just saying, like, at the end of the day, I, I, I really I think we we don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater in the sense that, like, OK, we don't want to do traditional church anymore. We just want to meet at home. Well, I, I still think you, there's a place for traditional church to meet at this central location as a, a large body of believers in a particular city to come together and celebrate Jesus corporately. I think there's absolutely place for that. In the, in the local body, you have opportunity to not only serve within that church, but to serve your community in a more impactful way, because now you're doing it collectively as a group. You're pooling your resources and your talents as a group to now go and affect lives right in your community. I feel like in a small group, it's really hard to do that if that's all you have is the small group. But then like speaking of small groups, like a, a large church that embraces the idea of small groups can create that level of intimacy without divorcing itself from the 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 traditional body the, the traditional church and the local body 
you know, so why can't we have both? Like, why do we have to divorce ourselves from traditional church in order to feel closer to God? Perhaps a lot of our churches need to do better of being intentional with its with its members to make them feel like they belong and that they're a part of something bigger than themselves and that they have the support they need in order to walk this walk. So, you know, that's just what I was thinking about today. I'm going to cut it short. This is short for me, about 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, I want to hear your feedback on this. What do you think? Do you think that traditional church has a lot of issues and you choose not to be a part of it? Uh, are you one of these people that totally believes in traditional church and doesn't believe in small groups? I mean, where are you on the spectrum? So that's just what I was thinking about. Love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. God bless. <laughs>